So this is part two of um, limiting factors in the Kelvin cycle, uh, and this will concentrate really on temperature. Now, the main effect of temperature on biological systems, you're basically looking at its effect on enzymes. And as we know from enzymes, if we increase the temperature, we will increase the rate of reaction initially. There's more kinetic energy in the system. Um, the molecules will move around more, more collisions, and so on. And we also know that beyond a certain point, um, our enzymes will start to denature and we would expect to get a lowering of the rate of reaction. Now it's slightly more complicated um, in the Calvin cycle um, but we'll deal first of all, we'll just mention um, our light dependent reaction with the Z scheme. That's my simple version of it. If you remember the first step in the uh, Z scheme is the splitting of water. Uh, this does involve an enzyme, so there is part of the light dependent reaction which can be temperature dependent. We can basically ignore it, it the, the effect is quite negligible, so we're not really going to look at that. Much more interest to us is, is what's going to happen in the Calvin cycle. Now, the key enzyme, of course, here is Rubisco. Now, what Rubisco would do in ideal circumstances is it would take a ribulose bisphosphate and it would add to that carbon dioxide and we'd end up with our nice six carbon compound which would quickly break down into two lots of glycerate three phosphate, a three carbon compound. We might expect that as the temperature increases we would get a normal enzyme kind of um, increased rate of reaction. The problem is this, Rubisco, if we give it its full name, is ribis, ribulose, excuse me, bisphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. Okay, remember the A's bit telling us um, inferring it's an enzyme. And the problem is this, beyond a temperature of about 25 degrees Celsius, the Rubisco enzyme will start to favour, instead of carbon dioxide, it will start to favour the oxygenase reaction. So we will end up with this. Now, how does that matter for the plant? Well, if we're not creating any of the 6 carbon compound, we never get our glycerate 3-phosphate, so we don't get any TP, and then we don't get um, any IUBP recycled, and so we're basically stopping um, the Calvin cycle again mid-step. So this was why at temperatures of about above 25 degrees C, you're going to reduce the rate of photosynthesis even though the temperature is increasing. Um, this part here is photorespiration and it basically results in ATP and our reduced NADP from um, the light uh, dependent reaction being wasted and that isn't good for the plant there are some plants that have a way um, around this if you remember doing looking at C3 and C4 plants there's stuff up on the blog as well if you want to look that up um, it's not on the syllabus, but it will certainly help uh, understand the wider implications of temperature on the Kelvin cycle.